Resident Evil. Hello, everyone. Two. By popular request, here is a the first of four runs, first of four no damage runs of Resident Evil 2 remake on console. So this is Leon A, Hardcore, S plus rank. I skipped the cutscenes this time because there's really no need to keep the cutscenes, I guess. But uh, really, you know, this is just more of an adaptation of really the same strats that I've been using on PC except on console. I did play this on a PS4 Pro, but uh, I did not actually cause any damage to any enemies with any knives, so... Really, this is more of a this is more of a knifeless video. Don't move. I'll be back for you. I did, however, use the knife as a defense item throughout this. Freeze! I'll shoot. So we're running with the Arclay Sheriff costume here, and uh, we're gonna turn around, and he's gonna hit the wall. And we're going to run this way, unlock the door, and head out the front. Yada yada yada. Same as usual. This is out of control. So as soon as the screen fades in, we're going to hold right, and we're just going to run through all this. Shit. It's everybody. They've all turned. So you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, the station. By aiming my gun, moving up and down the stairs, um, you get a slight speed boost every time you lower the gun. It's like the initial first step that Leon makes. Whenever Leon does like the initial first step, he gets like a little bit of a speed boost. But uh, for the most part, I mean, the strats that I'm using in the, uh, in the console version of this, uh, of the no damage runs are pretty much the same. The only difference is I just don't use the knife on G1 and G3 because really a good 95% of strats that I have already done on PC could already be done on console. Jesus. So we're going to go over here. Uh, zombie's going to bust through. I'm trying to bank up as much handgun ammo as I can, specifically for the uh, Birkin G1 fight, so that's why I went out of my way to grab some extra handgun ammo. Oh yeah. <laughs> In the middle of this run, somebody uh, donated for me to change the costumes, so I did. That's a thing that I'm probably going to be doing in this run periodically. Jesus. They're everywhere. So we're going to squeeze on the right side of that locker, you know, wedge ourselves in between the locker and the zombies. Done deal. Does anyone know what started this? But I have to turn off the noir filter because this black and white filter sucks. The alternate costumes are pretty cool. I actually don't remember which uh, costumes come with the deluxe edition or not. This is not how I imagine hey chat, does anyone know?
We don't need to worry about putting any boards up on these windows either. Well, yeah, but which costumes come with the Deluxe Edition? Deluxe is everything all... Yeah, but compared to the default, I know that the Deluxe Edition gives you all the costumes. I'm just... Anyway. I guess I'll just use the simple answer. You get more costumes with the Deluxe Edition. So while we're over here, I'm uh, going to go ahead and take this guy out. Actually, I probably didn't even need to, truthfully. Wait, no, I did. It was a scenario, because whenever we come back down through here, in order to go out the uh, west office, then we need to have that zombie not screw us over on the way to the west office. Because zombies on hardcore mode can lunge twice, and if they lunge twice, then they will completely fuck you over. So anyway, we're gonna put the uh, we're gonna put the board on that window there. We actually do want to put the board on that window there because we're gonna be passing through this area several times, and that's one less zombie to dodge. Fuck you. So shooting zombies with the handgun, uh, the handgun does the same damage on the zombies no matter where you shoot them. You just uh, dismember them if you shoot them in a place enough times. So if you shoot them in the head, then you have a chance of critically removing the head. Well, that's really more ties into critical hit chance than anything else. But uh, for everything else, like all the limbs have like a set amount of HP, I think. Now that we got the spade key, we're going to run back through the first floor. Gonna go on the left here and take the uh, gunpowder. Mix up more handgun bullets. Just marginally more handgun bullets. And the code for the safe here is 9157. I also like to have the extended mag when playing Leon A, if doing no damage, so because of the uh, extra handgun usage, it is not a bad idea to take this, especially since we will not be using the knife on G1. There's no reason to get the uh, muzzle for the Matilda because the muzzle for the Matilda just causes the gun to just like not jump. And if you're placing if you're placing all your shots pretty deliberately or otherwise, then you don't gotta worry about muzzle jump all that much. It's going downstairs, clear cutscene. By the way, uh, cutscenes do not add to your game timer. Which is why I left them in the previous run. Marvin, do you copy? Marvin! Damn it! But the two things that do not actually cause your game timer to increment or go up or count upward, whatever word you want to use, is literally pausing the game. Pausing meaning the words pause are literally on the screen. But anyway, I pick up items specifically in this order. I pick up the, the, the flash grenades, 
the bullets, the valve, the gunpowder, and the, the fuse in that particular order so that I can attempt to beat that zombie from getting to the door. But uh, yeah, you have to pause the game or watch a cutscene to stop the timer from going up. You can also save and quit your game and reload your game in order to uh, redo it if you make a mistake. I'm gonna try to shoot these guys in the legs or in the foot because they have a higher chance of hard stunning if you shoot them. And because Leon has the extended mag, this is why I like the extended mag, by the way, Leon gets to stun these, uh, these zombies a lot easier, so. That's done, they're done, we're moving on. Take the detonator, take this other flash grenade here. So one other thing that I really want to emphasize is please watch this video to the end. Don't follow along with the video until you have watched the whole video and you understand the logic of why I do what I do. Because if you try to follow along with any of my runs, like verbatim, you're probably not going to get it if you if you don't do everything exactly as I do. There's plenty of room for error in a run like this, so you can improvise as needed, but because of how I use resources in this game, and there's really not a whole lot of resources to work with, especially on hardcore, where your uh, damage values, where your damage output is severely diminished, then you're going to wind up wasting bullets. So, pay extra close attention to that. So this guy's gonna bust on in, and uh, we're not gonna bother wasting a shell on him. We're just gonna wait for him to uh, go exactly that far in the evidence lockers, and then we're going to head out the other way and go up the stairs. Guess what zombie we don't have to dodge? That guy, because we boarded up the window earlier. But we're, we are going to go over here, though, and just, like, chill out here and wait for this female zombie to drop over the banister over here. We already killed the other zombie on the stairs, so we don't got to worry about him. Then we're going to open this locker here, which has more shotgun shells. C-A-P. Up to this point, I have not been getting the Magnum. I might wind up getting the Magnum in future routes, especially as I go for no save, no damage in this game. I kind of had a uh, change of heart about the Magnum in some situations, especially because ideally you want to save as many grenades as you can. Which is why I started talking about, please watch this video till the end before you attempt this if you're going to try to follow my strategy. But yeah, I've gotten pretty much every shotgun shell so far. Haven't really wasted any ammo. We're gonna combine the battery with the detonator. And the shotgun is just like pretty much your primary like zombie killing weapon. The thing about the shotgun is you have to be, you have to be like extra close, like danger close if you're going to make it work. I'm gonna kinda slowly go over this way. We have to be real slow. As long as you don't run, you don't attract the liquors. That's done. GG, easy. So now we're going to solve the unicorn statue and the solution for the unicorn statue on Leon A is Pisces, Scorpio, and the water is like Aquarius or something. Next we're going to decapitate both of these guys so that they stay the fuck out of our way. Actually, we're gonna decapitate number three here too because we want all of them to be out of our way whenever Mr. X shows up. I mean, yeah, sure you can run around the other way to avoid waking the one zombie, the second zombie that I decapitated, or you could just not climb the ladder here and the zombie who is eating ass will not wake up either. But 
taking that ladder actually saves quite a bit of time, so that's that's why I opted to go for the ladder. In order to make up for the two gunpowder blues that we mixed to get more handgun bullets earlier, we're going to combine this blue gunpowder with the yellow gunpowder over here. And now we have even more shotgun shells. Basically, throughout most of throughout most of Leon Leon's playthroughs, we want to mix as many shotgun shells as possible. Same with Claire's acid rounds. You want to mix up shotgun shells and acid rounds. But uh, for different reasons. For Leon, you want to mix these up so that you have more... So that you have more uh, shots to decapitate zombies with. The solution to that was Lady, Arrow, uh, Snake. And then this guy's going to come down, and whenever he drops down like this... Some people were saying that they couldn't dodge him the other way whenever I ran right. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to run directly towards the liquor and to Leon's left. And then that will generally make the liquor jump over you. And now that everything else is done, we have the knife. And we're ready to go back out into the main hall. Get rid of the key. Carsey, does the save and quit method work on hardcore mode? Can you please elaborate? Saving and quitting does allow you to roll back your timer if you made major mistakes. So the next statue here is going to be Lion, Herb, Bird. Now that that's done, we're going to place all the metals here all at once. Yeah, that's 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 another thing too, which I have continually forgot to mention, forgotten to mention with hardcore mode. Although it tells you this like at the very beginning of hardcore mode. All of your uh, all of your all of your saves have to be manual. So, if you reload from an autosave, it's from the very beginning of the game. And even that autosave at the very beginning of the game will still retain your game time. So if you're going to redo any part of the of an S plus run and you're using saves, you have to quit out into the main menu and load the file from the main menu. Or you have to load your save twice, one or the other. You either load from the main menu or load your save twice in the pause menu if you die. But that's like only if you die. Otherwise you, you can just you can just load the game as normal. What the no. For Leon, the first save is going to be in the sewers, the second save is going to be uh, before G3, and the third save is going to be before Super Tyrant. We want to save all of our grenades for Super Tyrant, so not a single grenade used. Alright, so G1. This is really all that you need to do in order to be able to use all of the strats that I used without using the knife. It's just uh, grab handgun bullets and you just kite him around and shoot him. Just wait until he attacks. Preferably whenever he does the overhead smash. Like you'll notice that I d generally don't stop and attack all that much. Unless he's doing an overhead smash. Like that. And whenever he does that, he is like mega vulnerable. And you can just shoot him until he starts moving again. So there he goes again. There's that overhead smash. smashing a little more. Just wait until he does an overhead smash. Every single time. And then that's when you shoot him. But otherwise, if he's just like slamming his pipe into the wall and stuff, and he's still moving forward at you, you don't want to mess with that. Like that, see? Don't take shots unless you are absolutely certain that he is not going to hit you anywhere in that attack cycle. 
If you are not sure of the distance, then just keep running. If he actually grabbed me there, though, then I would have used a knife to escape. The thing is, knives, when it, knives whenever you counterattack with a knife, it actually doesn't do any damage. The low damage output of the 9mm Parabellum rounds is uh, means that it's going to take like 70 bullets or something like that. But as long as you didn't like stop to kill every zombie, and you actually visited the rooms in the correct order, then you should have you should have like a metric shit ton of ammo with which to fight Birkin. So after this fight is over, I'm going to take all of these handgun bullets so that I can actually use them against dogs. Now that that's done, we're going to grab more handgun ammo and we're going to grab the hand grenade. And that's everything out of all the items that we need. Of course, you can grab health if you want. Even if you can't use the 60 FPS knife or the 120 FPS knife, you can still use the knife to attack certain enemies in periods of inactivity. But, uh... Overall, personally, I prefer to use the knife as a defensive item or to poke zombies on the ground if I'm not sure how much HP they have. Alright, so next up we're going to put away this grenade. We have to leave, like, six inventory slots open, I guess? I think that's I think that's about right for Leon. But I think I only took like the handgun and the gunpowder and the bullets and the two knives. Yeah, that's what I took. Hey, I'm not done talking to you. So if I do that, then I'll be able to uh, mix up gunpowder as I go and uh, just use the handgun against the dogs. We're not going to be shooting any zombies or any other enemies in the basement. Now that we have the tool. Which is really just a crank. I don't know why they didn't just call it a crank. Gonna head into this room in the left here. These zombies are not awake yet. They only wake after you, uh, after you go through the kennel on the east side. I actually have no idea how early these zombies wake up, but it doesn't matter as long as you visit this area first. You could also grab the uh, key from the 10 and go get the Matilda parts if you want, but it's an extra inventory space, which is why I don't do it. As a matter of fact, uh, I tend to use shotgun a little more if a dog is like actually like running at me or something. But uh, I try to score hit stun on individual dogs one at a time. Killing all those dogs in the kennel will prevent other dogs from spawning whenever you actually go to uh, pull or hit the, hit the switches to open up the door to upstairs back into the RPD. So I come in here and I grab the flash grenade. Um, it's really the only item that you need to pick up down there. Uh, you can put away everything else. Or you can put it, put them away if you want to, but you don't really have to. I visit that area first, in general. But um, if you want to grab the diamond key and get like the side pouch, 
which by the way I would not recommend if you're trying to go for S plus rank because it adds too much time and you really don't need it whatsoever. Um, then you want to visit the diamond, or you want to visit the mortuary after you do this puzzle here. Because otherwise, if you visit the mortuary and get the diamond key first, and then you go to flip these switches, then the zombies will activate. And you will have to dodge zombies on your way out of this room. Of course, that dog is clawing that chain link fence there, and he's just going to climb over it, but uh, we're already a million miles away, as you can see. Grab the other blue gunpowder, and uh, we're going to exit this room. The dog will not follow us through. But this dog is going to meet us later. Also, by some miracle, he just, like, managed to survive five handgun shots. Right over here, we're going to premeditate our aim right here. And we're going to try to go right and left in order to trigger that dog's appearance. And there he goes. He's done, done in. Don't gotta worry about any liquors or anything, just more dogs, dog pop out, boom, boom, boom. Just try to score the stun, and if you can score the stun, then you got the rest. So all six of those dogs are done for. I'm debating whether I wanted to go ahead and uh, take out the dogs now or later, but since I don't have enough ammo, I elected for later, whenever I had the shotgun, which is good because the shotgun actually kills dogs in one shot at close range. More shotgun shells here. We're gonna grab the rest of those handgun bullets. You can definitely use the handgun to like poke dogs, but if they get too close, then that's about when you're gonna wanna shift to the shotgun. Save yourself. As you can see, we have like 26 shotgun shells plus the four that are in the uh, W870. So we have too many shotgun shells at this point. And it's really from just knowing the correct order to visit rooms. So, as long as you know what rooms to visit and in what order, then you don't have to worry about using shotgun shells willy-nilly because you're going to know what zombies are going to be awake and what aren't. You'll notice that I really don't do a whole lot of actual zombie dodging in this playthrough, or any of my no-damage playthroughs for that matter, because really dodging zombies is a very touch-and-go, very RNG kind of thing. There are some things you can do to make it more consistent, whether it's stunning them or whether it's like your difficulty adjustment value, but really dodging zombies, specifically dodging zombies, without like using any bullets or anything to stun them or otherwise, is going to be is going to be like relegated to like standard difficulty. I'm not taking a whole lot of shotgun shells here because I don't want my inventory to be too packed while I'm exploring upstairs. You can go ahead and throw away the crank. So when we go in here, we want to pick up the shotgun shells first because if you go to pick up the gear and then you try to go grab the shotgun shells, you're going to get grabbed. On the way out of here, we're going to grab the flash grenade. We need that flash grenade in order to escape the jail. Then we're going to discard that tool. We don't need it anymore. Wait for these zombies to bust out. And then... Actually, I messed that up, because I tried to shoot the guy in front of me. But uh, that's what we have knives for. We have those two knives for backup in case we get grabbed.
I only need the one more knife. Like, really, I just need to use one more defensive knife. Because once Mr. X spawns, we're not going to stop and kill and pick the knife back up. So we might as well use the knife with the lowest durability in the event that we need to use a defense item. Because then it will just eliminate itself from the inventory. Triggered Mr. X's spawn. Hopefully Mr. X follows us out. But if he doesn't, like here, then we're going to go right back into the door here. And apparently nothing. Apparently we're just going to let Mr. X wander down the opposite side of the hall and just sort of sneak around him. By the way, if Mr. X aggros, then you hear his theme. So if, if, if there's no music, then that means that Mr. X doesn't know where you are. So as long as you don't run, you can actually avoid aggroing him. Little known fun fact, you can stealth your way around Mr. X if you're... If you, uh, if you have a little bit of situational awareness. But now that we're done, we go through the first floor, specifically through the first floor. Don't go down the path that Mr. X went, where we go second floor. Then we're going to go in here, and we're going to aggro that liquor. We're going to we're going to make it scream at us, and then we're going to exit and re-enter. And now that liquor has despawned, or moved over to the other room, I think. One or the other. Anyway. So next, we're going to unlock the door. We're going to wait for this zombie to pop through. The reason why I want... The reason why I want to shoot that zombie is because whenever we grab the grenade and the jack handle, we have no idea when Mr. X is going to pop through. So he could pop through now or he could pop through later. And if you hear his footsteps, then that's about when you want to start going back through the library. I made a... Uh, Made a little bit of a stutter step there because as soon as I heard his footsteps, I was like, I was like, Jesus Christ, where is he? And I got caught on the geometry a little bit because the movement in this game is a little shaky. So he swung, he missed. Now we're going upstairs. Now that we have the jack, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna explore anywhere else. We don't need the other pouch. There's no need to get the other pouch. Especially because we never got the diamond key. We don't need to explore anywhere else on that west side of the RPD, because it's too risky. Then we hit the jack handle, now we're going to turn right. And uh, Mr. X is still a million miles away. Really getting around Mr. X is quite easy, it's just a matter of... It's just a matter of knowing the correct order to pick up items, and just... Just like making sure you're a million miles away before he shows up. Of course, I missed that shot like an idiot. But that's why, that's exactly why I had a knife. I got two shotgun shells left. Gonna use the crank, or the cog. Then take it back. We're going upstairs. gonna make a detour here to get the large gunpowder because getting the large gunpowder means more shotgun shells whenever we mix it with a white gunpowder because remember we're exclusively mixing shotgun shells using the small cog and now we can get the other uh, electronic part and leave Hope I don't have to write a report on this Thank <laughs> you. 
doing a quick spot check for Mr. X. Don't hear him anywhere, except there. But he's not coming in through the door, so where could he possibly be? He's not in this room. So we can just fall right down there and uh, take this shortcut. Because we're headed back to the basement, we're going to just try to get back to the first floor as quickly as possible. We can cut across the main hall. If we were playing as Claire, and we had to go back through Chief Iron's office, then we would take the uh, way out on the third floor. Just don't dilly-dally around. We don't need to revisit the save room, so... Actually, on second thought, I realized that I did need to visit the save room because I had no shotgun shells. Oops. Anyway. See, here's here's my here's my improvisation right here. Put away the club key. We don't need that anymore. Just taking one flash, a knife, uh, gunpowder there, a grenade for backup. <coughs> You don't actually need the Magnum in Leon A, but I'm considering working it back into my route because I know how to get the Magnum safely. The reason I just haven't gotten the Magnum up to this point is because I felt like I didn't need it, but it would probably be safer in a no save, no damage run to have something to pop G3's eyes with some semblance of accuracy from a million miles away. So getting the laser sight on the Magnum is probably a good idea. I'm going to explore that. And uh, surely you will know the answer. Anyway, I'm going to aggro these guys, and I'm going to stand over here and wait for them to come over here. I'm not exactly going to cheese them, but uh, if a dog causes Leon to, like, backstep, and he's like, huh, then he actually does take damage. Just fair warning. So this is actually kind of risky, what I'm doing right here. There's really nothing to aiming on the controller. You just have to premeditate where your aim is going to go. And uh, try not to miss like me. But the reason why I missed is not because I was trying to... Is not because I was trying to, like, actually hit the dog. If I, if I, like, if I, like, did that with mouse, then it probably would have had the same result. It's because of the method I was using in which I was aiming, not specifically the fact that I was aiming at the dog. But just like aiming with both sticks wouldn't have made a difference, I had to actually know where the dog was going to be, and I was having difficulty knowing where the dog was going to be. So, any notion that uh, keyboard and mouse has an obvious advantage over playing with a controller, especially for something as simple as getting an S plus rank is false. Deliberating, deliberating, there we go. Good job, Carsey, you solved the puzzle. Now we're taking the uh, parking permit here. I was just double checking, making sure that I have my flash grenade equipped. So we need the shotgun and the flash grenade for this. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to pull this lever. We're not going to use the flash grenade yet. You could pass through that area with two flash grenades, but because efficiency is the name of the game, we're going to bait Mr. X over here, and we're going to run around him. And then we're going to go this way and be mindful of how close the zombies are, because if there's any zombies that are close... Oh, dang. <laughs> Yeah, I actually messed that up pretty bad. But uh, I realized that that zombie over there was actually not blinded by the flash, so I had to use a shotgun shell. If that grenade did not bounce off of the uh, the fence there, then that would have blinded all of them. So be very, very careful about using the grenade that quickly. 
I guess the zombie kind of made me want to use the flash grenade that early because of how close it was. I just didn't want to get grabbed and, like, take a chance on how quickly the flash grenade would uh, detonate. Because you could get grabbed, and if a flash grenade detonates around the zombie grabbing you, you will break out of the grab. But I just didn't want to chance that. The reason why I don't get the Matilda stock upgrade is because it is not needed. You can get it if you want to. There's still plenty of time to do it. Because in game time, I finish this run. Run, quote unquote. This isn't a speed run. In under an hour and 30 minutes. Going through that gun shop looks like the only way. So I guess while we're going through all this auto-scroller shit here, um, there's something that I want to explain. This is not a speedrun. <laughs> this is absolutely not a speedrun. I have not done a single speedrun of this game yet. I've done numerous no-damage playthroughs, and I've done two no-save, no-damage plays, but uh, this is not a speedrun. The reason why it is as fast as it is, is because I'm not wasting time. There is a difference between the Umbrella Corporation? intentionally doing Umbrella everything that you can to go as fast as possible and not wasting time. If I was actually trying to go as fast as possible, then my goal time would probably be under an hour instead of an hour and a half. So I spend half an hour getting extra things to do safe strats. Based on what you've said, the sewer seems fitting. Gee, thanks. Can't imagine a real scientist being down here. So it is, it is quick, but I'm not spending. Come on. I'm not spending Sewers like a bunch of time dilly dallying How around. How they have a facility without the authorities knowing? Jesus, that earthquake! And besides that, I used I used saves, so. I'm going to take the Matilda. That's all, just taking the Matilda so that I can save one shotgun shell. You actually don't have to do that. All speed runs are speedy runs, but not all speedy runs are speed runs. I like that. Yeah, really, it's just this, the, the, I just planned out this run. Again? Like, I used planning to actually... Save on efficiency. I wanted, like, I wanted to make an efficient run, not a speed run. And the reason why I am making these runs, these playthroughs, excuse me. Holy shit! I'm using run because everyone is using the word run. You guys are throwing me off my game. The reason why I'm making these videos is as a guide. So the people who don't really want to invest too terribly much time in learning the game can actually uh, can actually learn how to play the game efficiently, have some room for error, and still be able to get an S plus rank. So I'm just trying to make make aware, you know, where all the choke points are. So that you don't, we like, do something like squander all of your what shotgun shells or all your handgun ammo in Just the wrong place. Can't say I didn't warn you. You said the virus turned people into monsters, not reptiles. Fair point. But that being said, another very, very frequently asked question is, are you going to speedrun this? And the answer is yes. But uh, only after I'm done doing no save, no damage for every character, for every scenario. So let me get this straight. Umbrella sells monsters like that to who? Our military? Somebody it is a else's? run. It's a run through of the, the game monsters. doesn't make it a speed it's run. I think you always usually make that very clear in your videos. I try to. Scary as that alligator was. I just don't do it the early enough. Because usually in the beginning of most video games there's like a lot more action happening. But this is like an auto-scroller walking-talking sequence. 
I'm not really a fan of those in video games. You can run a net. I can appreciate the cinematic value that the developer is trying to achieve, but it's secret weapon time. I think I would rather there be like a big long Metal Gear esque cutscene than anything else. Do you memorize everything in the run, or do you have a script with bullet points? Um, I usually memorize all this stuff through repetition, and typically you can do the same, or you can take notes. There's no wrong way to do it. You'll have to excuse the voice crack. I uh, didn't drink any tea before I started talking. So right about here, when we jump down here is when we're running the gauntlet. So you want to actually uh, try to shoot this guy's leg off before you go through here. Because if you do, then he will not be able to get out because crawling zombies cannot open doors. And we got our bullets back. If you're looking to get the achievement for one slick super spy, it's a lot easier to get it on standard or assisted difficulty. Just using only the EMF visualizer. The EMF visualizer puzzles were cool the first time, but in repeat playthroughs, this Ada section is kind of a chore. So we're gonna pass by that other zombie, falls down there, we're gonna grab the flash grenade, and then we're gonna run over here and we're going to take out the zombie's leg as well. And that should be the last zombie that we actually have to, like, dodge. But of course, Ada's, uh... Ada's gun here is actually a bit of a... Oh, wait, this is actually the one where I forgot to... Oops, this is the one where I forgot to use the EMF visualizer on the elevator, and then I got to it, and then I realized, oh, crap. <laughs> I need to go back and do it. Because this was like the first segment, I was I was actually kind of like panicking a little bit because it's like, oh god, I've never made that mistake before. So now I'm going back, gonna dismember these guys, because it was the next best plan that I could think of. And of course Misty is being super, super annoying with the shuffling. I'm still trying to take out her leg. But you can see when I got pincered there, it was like, it was like a do or die thing. Like I either dodge Misty or I don't. So like, if for whatever reason you have to, then try to shoot them in the leg and then run around them. I thought I would try, thought I would try shooting her and uh, went for the stun here, didn't I? Nope, I couldn't. So then, just as things were looking rather bleak, I uh, just waited for the other guy to shuffle around. Went a circle around that guy. You don't want to get too close to them, because they can actually lunge at you while they're on the ground. And if they do that, then you will most certainly get bit for sure. Got you. Always been good at running, Annette. So once again, you know, hit that, pull that switch, and then we're gonna flip that, and then we're gonna not pick up the handgun bullets. Mr. X is still too slow, and then boom. Yeah, okay, Twitch chat. There really isn't a whole lot for me to commentate over here because this is pretty much like an auto-scroller sequence. So if you have any other questions that I haven't already addressed in the run, please feel free to ask. Because right now I'm just trying to fill dead space. Bravo. 
Gonna burn me alive now? You'll never get your filthy hands on the G. I'm not the only one after it. You realize that? And you won't die alone. Well, there's a lot more memes or questions that I've already answered. So the only meme question that I'm going to answer, because it directly relates to this game, and directly relates to this run, is are we still calling Ivy's Groot motherfuckers? And the answer is yes. We are calling them Groot motherfuckers. Your ID is authorized until October 1st. Which scenario is the easiest to get S rank in? Uh, that's kind of difficult to say. Or S plus rank, rather. I would have to say I would have to say either of the A scenarios is easiest. Because you don't have Mr. X chasing you throughout RPD one and you don't really have to worry too much about routing in some places. There's fewer zombies. It's just it's just easier. The A scenario in general. Whereas the B scenario is like in a range mode. Taking all of my knives with me. Uh, well, actually, no, I'm not taking knives. all of my knives with me. I'm just taking the knife with the lowest durability. That's a pleasant smell. Right. Uh, consider concerning concerning the knife. If you're playing on PC and you want to get and you want to get the uh, get the knife clip strat, then you need to play at 60 FPS or over. Um, for the purpose of speedrunning, it's been limited to 120 frames per second. But if you're not speedrunning, then you can have whatever frame rate you want. Just like 170, 180. Just like as necessary. But I would say I would say 120 is probably like the best for most machines. Just gonna decapitate these guys. Used a knife. Because that shot whiffed. Then we're gonna re-equip the knife. Taking the other knife here. Really, I'm just using knives specifically as defense items. Specifically as, like, my only defense item. Except in the case of maybe one of these G-adults a little later. So after that, we're going to pull this lever down, and then while the bridge is lowering, we're going to run over here. Um, we're about to make our first save pretty soon, but uh, first I wanted to go ahead and get the rook plug so that that way whenever I made my save, which by the way, this is a run that uses saves, so if I messed up and took damage somewhere, I did reload it from a previous save. One of the most frequently asked questions that I've gotten on a lot of my no damage videos with saves, if this was a no save, no damage run, by the way, I would have put no save, no damage, is why do you save and load 
That's not me saving and loading. That's a jump cut. Because I edited the footage together. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to hide anything. Now, if I was splicing things together and calling it a no save no damage run, then that would be cheating. But uh, in general, you know, I feel as though no hit runs or no damage runs are not really meant to be competitive. It's like if you're going to if you're going to be competitive, then do like an actual speed run. So I didn't decapitate this guy earlier because I was playing too much Claire. I usually don't shoot that zombie, but he was too close, so I decided to get rid of him. So we're going to go over here, and then we're going to wait for the G-Adult to do its head wiggle, and then he's going to pull himself under the water. In order to get the stock, it's 2, 12, 8. You don't actually need the stock, but because of the refire rate, like I would personally, I would personally recommend that uh, being more deliberate with your shots is probably better overall than like getting the stock that actually like increases your refire rate. But on the rare occasions that you are able to do both, then there is no reason why you should not. Going ahead and uh, putting in some of these plugs here. We need the king plug and the queen plug next, so... In order to just clear up my inventory, I'm just going ahead and putting the knight plug over there. Putting the bishop plug over here. And putting the rook plug over here in order to get those in the right place. Really, I should have probably just banked those and put them in later, because if some poor soul happens to fast forward and wonder, well, why are those plugs already in? Then they're gonna have to rewind even more. I'm putting away one ink ribbon so that whenever I start the next segment, I don't have to worry about putting that ink ribbon away. I can just load and go. Carsey, why are you saving then loading? Jump cut. So here's segment number two. AKA, on every Let's Play video on YouTube. You know what they colloquially call that on YouTube? Part 2! So in order to get around this area, this is getting worse. you only need one hand grenade. Because Leon is a little bit wider than Claire, possibly maybe a little slower, we're going to pop 
pop this guy out, and, uh... Actually, I'm pretty sure I kept two grenades for this specifically. But the reason why I use grenades as my, cho as my choice of defense item against the G-Adults is specifically because whenever Leon uses it, he doesn't back off. If he uses a knife, then he backs off after he uses the grenade. So if you back off after that, then it completely ruins your chances of actually being able to follow up with a dodge by running to Leon's left. So as long as the G-Embryo is, or G-Adult rather, is not, uh, is not just like huddled up against the wall whenever you use the grenade, like huddled up against the wall towards Leon's left whenever you use the grenade, then you could just use the grenade and just like pop right around him. Easy peasy. How consistent is that second G-Adult dodge? Not too consistent. Usually I like to pop that guy out of the water or have a second hand grenade ready for him specifically, but uh, in future iterations of my of my no damage playthroughs for Leon, especially when I get around to doing no save, no damage, I'm actually probably going to wind up using the Magnum at the G adults so I could save grenades for Super Tyrant because I think that sacrificing time to be able to kill the G-Adults with the Magnum so that I will have grenades for Super Tyrant would actually wind up being safer because using the using the, the grenades against Super Tyrant will pretty much always keep Super Tyrant in a state of, per, of perpetual hit stun, which makes it easier to move around him, it makes it easier to telegraph his attacks, just, just, just everything. It makes Super Tyrant totally free. So, that is, that is basically the straw that broke the camel's back as far as me getting Magnum. But anyway, we have the flamethrower, we have everything else. The flamethrower and the plugs, and now this guy is being an asshole and spitting G-mutants. Just spitting little embryos. So we're gonna wait for him to apparently go back into the water like a dick. But I decided to squeeze over to the right this time because he wasn't that far over to the right so I thought I'd try and if I failed well I was gonna get grabbed and I'd be able to sacrifice uh, another grenade to get out so you know one two grenades probably good enough this guy's gonna pop out and as soon as he pops out we're just going to back off after he swings and misses we can just go because unlike the other animation where you shoot him and he pops out of the water and he roars um, he actually will not cause Leon to flinch whenever he pops out of the water a second time, so it's uh, better to just back off and uh, wait for him to swing, miss, and then you just run around him. Also, hopefully you killed all the zombies earlier up to this point, because if you didn't, then there will be a zombie waiting to ambush you as soon as we come out of the organ trail. Now that we're done with all that, we're going to put in the rest of the puzzle pieces, just the king plug and the queen plug, and then we're going to get ready for Birkin. And we get ready for Birkin by having two flash grenades and the flamethrower. That's all you need for Leon. Actually, you just need one flash grenade because you will pick up another flash grenade mid-fight. Okay, almost there, Ada. So just the one flash grenade. And uh, gotta double check and make sure that I got it equipped at some point. Pretty sure I will. One, two, four. In order to... avert the power over there. And then we're going to walk over this way, just walk across the hose. Jesus Boom, Christ. there's the boss. We got plenty of shotgun shells, so gonna wait for him to plunge his claw through and just pop this a couple of times. I know I could use a grenade on the shutter, but I'm trying to save my grenades. Because otherwise Super Tyrant is going to be mad risky. 
So this next section coming up here, uh, we have to make sure that Birkin is not going to hit us whenever we drop down the ledge. So I'm shooting twice, like I'm backing up and shooting here so that he just like throws a temper tantrum in the previous room and by then I'm already a million miles away. But if he's already started following me, then we just have to start running because he will inevitably stop to lunch slash a place where we already were like a million miles away. I have no idea why he does that. Just know that he does. Anyway, so we got the second flash grenade. We're going to throw the flash. Bump. And then we're going to spray him with the flamethrower. Then when he goes down, cease fire immediately. Cease fire immediately. And we're going to flame a little more until we get down to 100 fuel. Specifically 100 fuel. Because then he's going to get back up. And if we waited... If we, if we waited, and we still have 100 fuel, then that is exactly enough fuel whenever we use the next stun grenade to be able to force him to stagger again. And then by the time he's like mid-stagger animation, we can go hit that switch, and boom, one cycle. Let's hope that's the last of them. There's a much faster version of that particular strategy used in actual any percent runs nice. on hardcore. Where'd you get that? Where you use like one less flash grenade, but the speedrun strat was already was already uh, pretty consistent. Where you just deplete Birkin's HP with the flamethrower. All I did was just juggle the stun a little bit, just juggle his uh, stagger meter a little bit. with an extra flash grenade so that I would be able to guarantee a one cycle without like being in the middle of the crane whenever I send it back because it is very possible to mess up so be prepared this tram is bound for nest do not exit until the final destination in order to get a one cycle on Birkin G2 he has to be under 12,000 HP so under 50% of his HP every hit with the crane does uh, 7,000 damage. Birkin has 24,000 total damage. I actually have no idea exactly how much damage I did to him with the flamethrower because I've only practiced this strat. I haven't actually like done any research into how much damage the actual uh, flamethrower does. Before we head in there, I'm okay. realizing my inventory is a little full, so we're going to make a quick trip to the item box here. I'm going to plop the grenade and the knife and the T-bar and... Actually, I probably didn't need to plop those shotgun shells in there, but I still did anyway. It's very easy to get caught on the geometry. take the hand grenade and try to stay as close to the door as possible so the other zombie doesn't crowd up on us. And then we're just going to traverse the outside of the room and as as is the usual rule, let feeding zombies lie until you hit the trigger that until you hit the trigger that causes them to get up and stop feeding. In this case, I'm pretty sure it's the latter. So, more gunpowder, uh, combat knife, and now we're going to check Where's the zombie? There's the zombie. That guy is wearing a flame retardant suit, so you can't really hit him with acid rounds. Also, don't do what I did and have the grenade equipped here. You definitely want to equip that knife as soon as you pick it up, by the way. Because in case he grabs you, you'll accidentally use a grenade. Based on the order in which I was picking up items, I picked up, you'll notice I picked up the grenade and the combat knife. Make sure you have the combat knife equipped before you go to fight the zombie in the flame retardant suit. 
he actually does have a lot of HP, by the way. So, you want to go for that decap. But, if you've been playing Leon up to this point, it pretty much goes without speaking. You know, you're going to go for the decapitation. Now we just sent the uh, bridge across. You could do a little bit of do as I do. Just not that much do as I do. Because I'm going to tell you that I messed something up and I'm going to tell you the correct way to do it. Because I either learned the correct way to do it either this run or a previous run and sometimes I still make mistakes especially where safety is concerned. The safest thing to do in that particular situation would have been to equip the knife. Anyway, moving on, next topic. So we're gonna put away this knife over here. Are we? What are we doing here exactly? Okay, so we're reloading the flamethrower. We're going to put away the flamethrower. We're going to put away the knife. We still got a single grenade. I'm putting away the uh, blue gunpowder here so that we can just exit immediately and not make another pit stop at the item box. So we want our next real item box trip to be in the server server room. Taking the high-grade gunpowder, mixing it with the uh, large gunpowder. At this point, always prioritize them shotgun shells. In the A scenarios, the two codes for this are... Three, one, two, three. And wait for it. Two, zero, six, seven. This Taking another grenade, it's just going to stack it. And then we're going to use the dispersal cartridge. Manual mode engaged. Adjust amount of solution to match cartridge capacity. So the solution is red green, then hit blue red green until the puzzle is solved. So red green, blue red green, blue red green. You may notice we haven't taken the flamethrower with us this time. And that's because I discovered that the flamethrower is actually significantly more useful against G3 than it is on the Groots. As a matter of fact, it's wasted on the Groots if you know exactly what path to run. So if you know what path to take when you're going around, going through this area, and you just visit the rooms with, with Groot motherfuckers as little as possible, then you can actually use their reset positions to your advantage and just plot out the correct way through them. I'm just gonna pop these heads over here and uh, now we're going upstairs. So over here, walk. We walk whenever we hit that column. As a matter of fact, whenever we're walking through this passage, wherever we're going through this passage, we just want to straight up walk. Because when the liquor drops down, if you ran at any time before that, then the liquor is going to know where you are. So once you get close enough to the liquor to where you can actually dash towards the door, that's when you dash. And this sounds like hella poppin' water balloons. I know I say this every time, but...
Anyway. We got the signal modulator now. Once we get over here, these liquors are about to get aggroed, so we're going to squeeze in between these two tables over here. Then the liquors are going to slowly, just ever so slowly. Also, I for some reason decided to set the puzzle here. Just set it up to Murph. I gotta wait for that second liquor to actually, like, commit to moving around the table, so that when, whenever we actually do, move in the opposite direction, he won't cut us off. So that's why I'm waiting a bit before I solve the puzzle, because if I solve the puzzle too fast, then the liquors are going to be on both sides of the table, and they are going to cut out my exit. Why doesn't Ivy spawn on those stairs if you go back that way instead of back through the solution room? Because whenever you change the state of the area, then, you know, whenever you turn on the power, then that ivy will always spawn. Who left the freezer open? Cooling complete. And once we go back into the hall here. We just walk. Because we don't have a single thing that is going to deal enough DPS to those liquors. Fighting these guys is absolutely not recommended under any circumstances. We're getting more flamethrower fuel over here. I'm gonna put away the grenades. Take the flamethrower back. Of course, we're not using it on Groots. And we're taking this knife over here to use as a defense item. Just in case we get grabbed by the Groots. But uh, as long as we have the stock, the shotgun stock and all the shotgun shells that we have, I realize this just contradicts whatever I said about the shotgun stock earlier. Actually, yes, the shotgun stock is actually quite helpful in getting around Groots. I wish I'd said that earlier. I wish I was even thinking about that earlier. But this is also probably the first run in which I have routed, done this particular route, so oops. It's okay. I'll rectify that whenever I do the no save, no damage commentary, whenever I do actually do no save, no damage. That did the trick. So we're going to take the grenade, and uh, Mr. X is going to show up, so we want to be super careful. The state of this room will change once you use the P-Epsilon solution and just like spritz it everywhere, but this is why we have a knife. Because if we get grabbed, then we actually have a little bit of an invincibility window to run around other Groots for maybe like three seconds or so. There's Mr. X. We'll pop this guy. Back off. You also. Back off. And see that? We only had to pop two Groots. And Mr. X is nowhere near us yet. Exactly what a little bit of planning will do for you. But, uh, you're actually not supposed to shoot that second Groot. Oh man, that Groot was, like, really close. Just shoot the first Groot and then squeeze. That's actually probably the better thing to do, because if the second Groot decides to uh, rush you and he actually grabs you, then you can use the knife. I do believe that the solution 
once you use the P-Epsilon gas, yes, it does actually cause all of the Groots to just lie down. Hopefully the GCM is up here. Like, it does incapacitate them all, and it gives you exactly enough time to go pick up the, uh, the chip for the wristband. There's another videotape. We already know what a jackass Martinez is. Fuck Martinez. I actually learned that that was an NWA song, Fuck Martinez. <laughs> I think it was NWA. So in preparation for uh, G3, while I am going to actually probably use the Magnum in future routes, um, and right. it is going to be okay. used against G3 in order to pop the eyes easier, because you're pretty much going to have no choice but to pop the eyes. Taking the gunpowder here, and we're going to combine it here, and... We just need shotgun shells and the flamethrower. Maybe one or two flash grenades. So here is part three. I have loaded another save. Why is G3 in the background? Probably because it's a jump cut and I took damage on that segment. Alright, so, I actually probably shouldn't even have the grenade in my inventory. Um, in another instance of do as I say, not as I do, uh, I would recommend putting your grenades away and maybe like substituting for a flash grenade or a knife. Actually no, we're at an overabundance of grenades, so just scrap that, just have grenades. So we're going to start by shooting the eye on his leg, and then we're going to shoot the eye on the back, and then we're going to move this way. Soon we're going to concentrate fire on the shoulder eye, but the reason why I want to go this way is to get the other flamethrower fuel, which we want to get at the very start of the fight, because once this happens, now we can start DPSing it. Does this look familiar? Oh yeah, probably because I'm not actually using the knife here, I'm just using the flamethrower instead. It's the exact same strat. So, all you people talking about how the knife is too OP or whatever, quit your bitchin'. Quit your bitchin', I see you. So right about now, we're just trying to play it carefully. Maybe do a little bit of sniper shotgun here. But uh, whenever he goes for the four-piece combo over here, provided we're far enough away, then we can just keep luring him back and forth, and whenever he goes for the four-piece combo, that's when you want to shoot the shoulder eye, because that's when he's going to be stunned the longest. Okay, so, basically, from this point on, whenever he goes into phase three, we're just going to keep spraying him. As a matter of fact, it was a lot faster to beat him with the flamethrower than it was with the knife, so... By now, he's actually at zero HP, and I'm just like, I'm just like dumping flamethrower fuel into him. But whenever he starts moving again, that's when he can actually die. So it was just one more shot. So yeah, if you were having difficulty because you couldn't really do any of the bosses or any of the strats with the knife or otherwise, I realize I was kind of throwing mad shade there for a second, but really you just had to use the flamethrower instead of the knife here. That's all. That was the answer. Because yeah, it, it wouldn't have done the same DPS just like slashing the knife, so. Use the central elevator to evacuate immediately to the bottom level train platform. 
I missed the G2 commentary. That's what I'm stuck on for Leon. Well, I will explain that during this auto-scroller sequence. Once again, the strat for G2 is to throw a flashbang. Once you've lured him off of the platform and he jumps down. Well, first you have to send the crane across. Then whenever you send the crane across, you grab the two flash grenades. Like you grab the other flash grenade. You have to have two flash grenades. You throw a flash grenade. He gets stunned. Then you fire the flamethrower. You just, you just spray him until he is staggered. And then you wait for the stagger animation to be done. Then you get it down to 100 fuel. Then you wait for him to get back up. Basically, you can just do that. You can just spray it until you're down to 100 fuel, then wait for him to get back up. And by then, his stun will have reset. So once he gets all the way back up, that's when you throw the other flash grenade, making sure that he is in the middle of the... Uh, making sure that he's in the middle of the platform there. And then you just throw the flash grenade, spritz him with the flamethrower, then he's staggered again, then you hit him with the switch. Then he's done. So now that we're at the very end of the game, we're just putting away the flamethrower, we're putting away everything except for our shotgun and all of our grenades. And a couple of knives. But actually, just having the shotgun and the shells is good. Man, look at that. I got I got nine grenades and five flame rounds. So here is part three. This is our third save. The reason why I do this is because Mr. X is generally highly unpredictable, but with this strat, I was actually able to, to do this. I was actually able to do this on the first try, so... I personally did not need to use this save, but I would highly recommend that you make your third save before Super Tyrant, because at this point in the game anyway, you're going to be very, very tight on resources. So that's why you want to save. Flame rounds? Flash... Flash grenades. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I made a I made a I made a boo boo. I made a verbal faux pas. I have five flash grenades and nine hand grenades. Sorry, they both start with F. Can you blame me? So we're going to dump the knife, and then we're taking the joint plug. We don't need that knife anymore. I mean, you can you can get up to... You can get all up in his grill and try to inflict stun with the knife, but if you have grenades, just, like, don't do that. So anyways, here's how you ration out your grenades for this. We're going to wait until he starts roaring, because when he starts to put his claw down and he starts to walk towards us, that's when we throw the first one. We wait to just before he's about to start walking to throw the next grenade, because when the grenade detonates... We'll just loop him. And in order to make space, that's what we need the flash grenades for. Um, I'm backing off here, and uh, I actually want Mr. X to come towards this side, or at least stay out of the middle. Because whenever he walks out, then there will be two concrete blocks that drop down, and we want to use a grenade for that. So after that's done, we're going to throw flashbangs and we're only going to have one flashbang left. We want that last flashbang. Don't use the last flashbang. So when you're around two flashbangs, just re-equip the grenades. The trick to this fight is to throw flashbangs, throw regular grenades. The regular grenades do all the damage. He has to be below a certain damage threshold, and a minute 30 needs to have elapsed in the fight. Whenever he comes down from a jump like that, he has an AoE that just causes a lot of stun. Also, I should have definitely followed up with another grenade there, but you can see because my health didn't flash on the screen that it actually didn't cause any damage. So, now that that's done, we're just uh, trying to create space and wait for Ada to drop the rocket launcher. Then, I threw a flash. And we got the rocket launcher. 
Like, you throw a flash literally as soon as the cutscene is over. Like, you have to buffer that shit. So basically, just hold the weapon, hold the, the sub-weapon button, and then throw it. And try to, and try to, like, back up while doing so. Because... By doing so, you basically buffer that flash grenade, and you're able to just run around any attack that Super Tyrant throws at you while you're trying to pick up the rocket launcher. And he's stunned for exactly long enough for you to do that. Then it takes two rockets, boom, done. Shit. And now we're at the end of the game. Gotta get out of here. Please clap for me. I can't believe I actually miss her. Just like I said we would. So, the requirements for S plus rank, in case I didn't already mention them in the other four S plus hardcore runs that I did, is you have to get the hardcore par time. <laughs> And for a scenario, that's two hours and 30 minutes, and you have to do it in three or less saves. That's literally the only requirements. You can heal as much as you want. So anyway. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also check out my other no damage playthroughs of Remake 2 and other Resident Evil or other video games in general. I also do... Well, I guess up on my YouTube, I really only have, like, Castlevania, as far as no damage is concerned. And Silent Hill and Dino Crisis. Oh, right, one more requirement. Don't use infinite weapons, except for the infinite knife. Damn, I am like all over the place in my commentary today, whoops. Anyway. So, where was I? Ah, right, more shelling. Okay, so check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. I stream all of these playthroughs on my Twitch channel pretty much every day. Uh, streaming on Twitch is my full-time job. Weird flex, but okay. Um, also, if you would like to further fund my bad speedrunning habit, you can do so on my Patreon at patreon.com slash carcinogensda. For as low as $1 a month, you will get early access to all of my videos. And I mean early access. Like I post them literally as soon as I upload. Because I don't like to just straight up upload videos and then just like release them. Because if I do that, then people's inboxes get bombarded and that's no fun. I mean, I've been kind of, you know, for Resident Evil, I've actually been kind of like releasing videos as soon as I can, but that's just because Resident Evil 2 is new, it's hype. But you get the idea. Anyway. That's pretty much it. So, uh, 
Next up will be Claire A. No damage S plus on console. Leave any questions you have for me or anything you'd like to cover in the comments below. So I'll uh, see you guys next video. Thank you for watching. Yay, trophies! I forgot this was like... My second playthrough on console. <laughs> hey, look at that, Frugalist. And a small carbon footprint. 